everyone! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Oksana and today I'm gonna go over my application who got me into the Student Summer Research Fellowship program at the Zurich back in 2019. When I was writing my application, I remember finding it really difficult because I couldn't find any good examples online of how I should write a motivation letter or the CV for this particular um, research program at that age or the similar programs. So that is why I decided now, three, four years later, to create this video so that I can help you guys. I know writing such an application for such a well-known program, especially a competitive program, it's exhausting time-consuming and stressful. So I hope that through my application, you will find a bit of inspiration or even more, more motivation to apply to this program because it's totally worth it. That being said, let's check the application. The first document that I had to provide was the official academic transcript for my home university. Unfortunately, I can't show you that because it contains uh, personal data. But instead, I can show you the grades from the university management system. So these are my grades from the first year of my bachelor degree. Um, these are exactly the grades that I applied with. I had an average grade of 9.80 out of 10, and I was in top three students of my class. The second document I had to provide was the CV. I really tried to keep it short under two pages and just focus on uh, the computer science related parts. It, um, the high school diploma and the bachelor degree that I was um, working on. I didn't include any details about my grades and classes that I took because anyways they were um, in the official academic transcript so it didn't make any sense to have them twice. I didn't include uh, the teaching degree that I was working on because, yeah, as I said, I wanted to keep the CV short and just focus on the computer science part. Then, in the work experience, I just provided some details about the task that I achieved at each uh, company that I worked for. As for the research experience, I had um, the opportunity to contribute to two published papers quite early in life, so I mentioned this as well. Then I make sure to include uh, my top projects from high school and university. For example, the first one and the second one were presented at National Software Competition for high school students. And the third one was an individual project for class in my first year of uh, bachelor. And by the way, all of them are still available on my GitHub profile, so you can check them out. In general, if you apply for software engineering or kind of research internship positions, I highly recommend sharing your GitHub username in your CV because it shows that you could do more than just study for a degree and it gives the future your future boss or your manager an idea of how well you can code and how passionate you are. Then, uh, besides work and some personal projects in my degree, I like to volunteer since uh, high school. I did mostly volunteering in programming workshops as a trainer, for usually for C, for the C sharp uh, language, I re actually really enjoy that. Unfortunately, my time doesn't allow to do one thing anymore. But that's a story for another time. As for the words and honors, I used to compete in quite some programming competitions and regional and national Olympics for computer science, even since middle school. And here I include just the most relevant ones. 
like for example the bronze medal at the ECPC Southeastern European region um, phase from 2018. And if you don't know about ECPC, this is short for International Collegiate Programming Contest and is the most important um, algorithmic programming competition for college students. Quite interesting, uh, when I started my fellowship at AJH, my research supervisor told me that participating in these kind of competitions will help my application. Yeah, and finally, the language section, uh, I just included my overall level and the certificate that I obtained. I didn't provide copies of any of my certificates. And finally, the part, I mean, the document in my application that made me so anxious and confused is the motivation letter. Even now, years later, with several letters of motivation submitted, I don't feel comfortable writing one. I don't know, it's just so personal, so specific. And yeah, it's difficult. So anyways, I won't read the letter out loud. You have it on your own. You can uh, stop the video, read it, and then resume. I just wanted to point out what, in, what was important for me in this letter and namely showing my passion for a topic that I could research. I mean, this FPGAs. This is a topic that I was reading on my own without any practical experience or a class at the university about this. I, I mean, I try to be honest here. And, and finally, what I do in each motivation letter is to include this paragraph of my continuous interest in developing my skills even though it's not related all the time to the position it just shows that i can do more than um, i apply for so yeah and one month later i got the email from tony who is the program administrator uh, just announced me that i've been selected among all the applicants and I also received an agreement which I had to sign if I accepted the fellowship. So this is the agreement. And after signing this, I received one more email regarding the details about housing, travel costs, duration, yeah, and stuff like that. Afterwards, I just got more emails about organization methods and the research topic and the supervisor that I was assigned to. But that's a story for next time. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. Until then, have a nice day!